Hello, a fair bit of warning right up front. If you are looking for my typical lighthearted, optimistic, bubbly kind of video today, this video is not it at all. But if you are one of those who choose to suffer right along with me, first, get your box of tissues out, and second, stick all the way to the end because I might have some piece of bittersweet silver lining to offer. Cool? Cool, I'll see you on the other side. This is my boy Maverick. Y'all might have seen him pop in my videos from time to time. Some might even remember that he is one of the key reasons why I'm no longer living the dream life in Singapore. Yeah, I bet you missed this. Maverick is a crossbreed between a black Labrador and a Burmese mountain dog. He's smart, he's strong, he's got a wicked sense of humor, and he talks like all the goddamn time. Technically, he's a rescue dog, although I don't really like that term. She's a rescue. Yeah, I rescued her. Really? Did you pull her out of a burning building? He used to be my buddy Alex's dog. He got it as a pup. He raised him for a number of years, but once he got his first kid, and he was in and out of the ER for a year, taking care of that ball of fluff became too much. I volunteered, and we took him in. I already had a family dog at the time. My big girl, Tammy. 155 pounds of pure breed, Bernice Mountain Love. I had a special bond with this dog that to this day, I don't think I will ever have with any other pet or human. But she was a handful. Like as soon as I would walk out the door, she would become a criminal. She would look for angles. She would steal anything you left on a countertop or a table. She could even open doors, Jurassic Park style. She got diagnosed with terminal cancer a couple days after Maverick joined the family and she had a very rough two months after that, and uh, I had to put her down. I don't have a lot of videos of Tammy, because I was too busy filming my newborn daughter. In my mind, these two are inseparable. When I came home that day, there was Maverick. This quirky, expressive dog that I knew since he was a pup was now the king of the house. He was there, he was filling the void. He picked up the slack, he stepped up. He made us laugh, he helped me process the loss, and I ended up making a promise to myself. I would trust him with my kids. I would trust him not to run off into the night. No leash, no ropes, no cages, just free roaming dog, and it worked out. He never went away. Well, except maybe to scare the living hell out of some chickens, as one does. And then came the opportunity of a lifetime. I'm uprooting the entire family and we're moving to Singapore. The goal was always to bring Maverick over with us in Singapore, but the vaccination protocol kind of dragged on a little bit and we had to leave early, so he stayed with Catherine, Joyce's cousin. Man, I hope it's not the last time I see my boy. And the initial plan was he would stay there for three to four weeks just to complete the protocol, and then she would fly him in with her to visit us in Singapore, and uh, we would rejoin with our boy. But... Deadly coronavirus. This is a now warning that the virus is contagious during its incubation period. To close the roads, hundreds of thousands of people left Hubei. It happened uh, through snakes. More than 18 people have died. The pandemic threw that plan completely out the window. Singapore completely shut down and Catherine was not able to fly to us in any circumstances. Then we tried to figure out a way to solo Maverick into Singapore as 
cargo, essentially. But that, that was not a good plan. The only way we could do it was gonna take a week and he was gonna do multiple stops in Europe and then Asia and Turkey and nah, no, no, no. So in the end, he stayed with Catherine for the entire year we were in Singapore, living with her in her tiny ass apartment in Montreal. And that turned out to be the best thing that could ever happen to her during this trying pandemic time. She had the world's most amazing dog as a flatmate for a year. Needless to say, she fell in love just like we did. And uh, when we came back, you know, we almost felt guilty to snatch him back from her. Catherine, I know I don't have to say it, but thank you, thank you, thank you for taking care of our boy in such a loving way for an entire year. I know all the pleasure was yours, but still, thank you. And we basically picked off right where we left off. He was happy to see us, we were happy to see him. New digs, new house. Same old Maverick, always in a good mood, always talkative. It's one of those things where none of us realized how empty the house was without this warm, cuddly presence around. He's also a very good playful partner for the kids, going as soft or as intense as you want him to, recycling a bunch of empty plastic bottles, always careful never to bite your hands, or playing tug of war with his favorite length of rope and he's pretty good at making a squirrel's life as miserable as possible, too. Stay off the floor, fellas. This is mine, bro. Nope. He's a great walking partner. He loves nothing more than hop in the car and join us on any crazy road trip we might take, not complaining or whining a single time on the 12 hours it took us to get to the rugged North Coast. He likes to sit wherever us humans like to sit, especially if a human is already sitting there, and he enjoys a good view. I swear he does. Then winter rolls along again. He's happy, I'm pissed off. Same old, same old. There's no outside. <laughs> no way. All right, let's check it out. Oh no. Needless to say, the joy of winter is not something I have in common with Maverick. The guy loves nothing more than a good blizzard. And that's gonna be the 2,554th snowstorm we got this year. Literally, from November to March, this guy is having the best time of his life. Let's patch of snow, buddy. Get it out of your system. No more snow around here. Yeah, you good? See you next year, garbage. But now he's getting on in years, and uh, three weeks ago, we noticed that his eyes were beginning to go a little bit. It's like he couldn't see out of his left eye at all, and had trouble with his right one, so... Oh, you're getting so old so fast, buddy. The vet suspected that it might just be the retina that is detaching itself, and... Uh, at his age, there's very little we can do. But he also started to lose weight at an alarming rate. And that's the thing with fluffy dogs like Maverick. It's, they don't look skinny because they have so much hair. You run your hand across his spine and there's the bones on his head. All the jaw muscles are gone. And uh, we knew. Just like Tammy, that was it. Maverick was on his last few miles with us. <sighs> I've been living with this dog for so long that one look at him and I can tell if he's thirsty, if he's hungry, if he's having a bad day, good day. He's having a string of bad days now. He keeps losing weight. He has trouble keeping his food down. Come on, buddy. We're at this 
point where his eyes have completely gone and he bumps into the walls and the chairs and people, you know. I'm just snapping my fingers all the time so that he knows where to go, where to turn. Me guiding a dog that cannot see is a little bit <laughs> ironic, I would say. I know what's coming. I know what's coming. I know what I have to do. I know what kind of part I need to play and I know how it's gonna feel because I've been here a couple times before. Today was a good day, you know. We spent all afternoon outside. He was lunging in the sun and in the shade. You know, he was smelling into the wind. Just, just relaxed. Happy. Alex came in for final goodbyes today, and I think Maverick enjoyed it. He immediately fell asleep on his lap, just like old times. I tell you right now, no squirrel would have dared touch the floor. And this guy was in his prime. Catherine came all the way down from Montreal to spend a couple hours with Maverick. He was so happy, he practically forced her to take him on a walk. That's, that's the part that start to mess with your head, right? Are we overreacting here? Are we, you know, acting too fast? That's the question Ariel asked me before going to bed tonight. But I know better. One last walk. Let's go home now. Ariel wrote him a goodbye letter, made him a drawing. One last carefree goodbye hug from Leo. And a final, genuinely loving embrace from Ariel, which absolutely destroys my heart. Hang in there, baby girl. Joyce and I are staying behind. We're gonna see this thing all the way through. The vet will be here any moment now. Almost there, buddy. I love you. I told you, this was gonna be a hard one to watch. But, a couple of weeks removed from those dramatic events now, and uh, that got me thinking. What would John Wick do? You're like a cutie boy. Well, John would get a new puppy, of course. And so did I. Meet Oreo, just about eight weeks old now. Don't worry, he'll get plenty of airtime in the future. Thank you for watching. I know this one was not easy, but now at least you know just a tiny little bit more about the best dog in the world. For Maverick, this is Simon signing off. Take care of yourselves. Peace out.